All right, today I'm going to see about switching out this well pump, 220 volt deep well. First thing I did was make sure the power was disconnected. I'm also going to be changing out the safety line on it. This well was drilled in August of 2002. It's July of 2022, so everything is about 20 years old. Almost 20 years old, not a month. So power is disconnected. Um, can undo these wire nuts now. This black wire doesn't do anything. That was just an extra. Can undo that. And we'll see if we can get her up out of there. All right, we're all disconnected. There's not a lot of extra wire here. I don't want to drop that. <clears throat> this is out of the way. You can see this pipe right here. That goes down and screws onto the top of the pitless fitting. So that was left in there from when it was installed. So I don't have to try and thread one down in there and get it hooked in. So all I should have to do is grab hold of that pipe, wiggle it around, try and loosen that up on that pit pitless and uh, get it to break free then pull it up so this is the hardest part getting everything up out of the well because i have to pick up the pump and all the water weight that's in the pipe so let's see if we can make something happen here all right i got it broke free i uh i couldn't hang on to the pipe reaching down in there so i thread it on a elbow it's three quarter inch i threaded that down on there so i actually could get my hands around something and then i wheeled it side to side to get the pitless freed up and while i was wiggling it I started pulling it and then i felt it break free so by pitless i'm talking about this right here let's get a rubber seal on it and that meets up to another brass fitting inside which is where your pipe connects and goes through your well casing so i'm going to, have to make sure this is all cleaned up and i have a new seal to put on it and this is a slip joint that slides down into that other piece in the casing so i got it up and out of there and uh Still got a ways to go. The well is, uh, what, 260 feet deep. I have no idea how far down the pump is because uh, I didn't own this when it was drilled and set. So, yeah, it's, it's rusty. This is why I have a rust filter in the house. Catches this crap. So I'm just letting it come out lay around coil wherever it wants just hit one torque arrestor it's coming out okay i can stop right here for you know a couple minutes take a break get a drink so i'll get this thing all the way out have it laid across the driveway here and uh do our thing change the pump change the uh line and then we'll wind up putting it all back down in there. So being a hose or a pipe, whatever you want to call it, as it comes out, it doesn't want to come out straight. It's naturally going to want to coil. This ain't my first rodeo pulling a pump. But you'll notice it wants to coil, 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 coil. Now notice down toward the bottom, we don't have rust. That's this outer ring. This is up near the top, it's all rusty as crap, but down here it clears right up again. And then we're gonna come back up around and up, and then <clears throat> back to well casing. We hit another torque arrestor. I think I'm almost at the pump. So, took another quick break. It's not real heavy, but. This is why uh, the professionals and the plumbers have a rig 
and it sits right on the top of the well case and it's got three wheels on it and the wheels clamp right around the pipe and they're just rubber tires and they clamp right around and it's got an electric motor and it just goes zzzz, and then all you gotta do is just walk around in a circle and guide the pipe and lay it out the machine does all the lifting but i don't have one of those all right give her another shot here and I think the pump's only down there about another 20 feet. I think I see it. Well, I found the pump. It wasn't down there nearly as, thought, as far as I thought it would be. Um, you know, with the well being 260 feet, I thought this thing was going to be down there at least 180. But I don't think I've got 180 feet of pipe laid out here. So this is a... Oh, what do we got here? There's nothing wrong with this pump. But like I said, it's been in the ground 20 years. What do we got? Um, Two hundred and twenty volt, yep. Single phase, yep. Thirty four hundred and fifty RPM, yep. It says maximum amps, eight amps. Yep, seems like I remember measuring eight amps on this thing a few years ago with a clamp meter uh, but the thing is with this it takes a ton of power to start it um, you know you'll see your meter jump to get this thing going then when it's actually just flat out running it'll draw 8 amps so the new one going down the well is a soft start it doesn't need that initial a uh, big boost of juice to get it running like this one does it basically just turns on draws five amps and away it goes all right so i'm gonna carefully cut this whole tape off back up to get above these electrical connections here you don't want to nick the pipe if we nick the pipe, we either have to put a coupling in it, splice it back together, or we have to cut it off shorter. I'm not going to throw this old pump away, because it still works. And, you know, worse comes to worse, you can always throw it back down another well. So here's our electrical splices. Wires that come down from the surface, connect them to the pump. So we're going to cut them off on this side. Just connect the pump there. Probably going to have to heat it up once these clamps are rolled back. Probably going to have to heat the pipe up with a torch to get it soft. To be able to slide that off. That's okay. But anyway, yeah. You know, pump craps out. Parents lose the pump. Aunt loses the pump. Something like that. And uh, if it's not one on the store shelves, you can't find one, you can always throw this one on the line and drop it back down a well to get by with. So definitely don't throw it away. Let's look at the evolution of three water pumps here. They're all different brands. Yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah. All right, we'll start on the right. This one was made sometime back in the 60s or the 70s. This old green thing. Came out of my grandparents' well. Probably, oh, when did they change that? Probably 20 years or so ago. It was in my grandfather's barn. He never hauled it off to the junkyard or anything. Never got rid of it. it wound up here. So here's the motor on the bottom. From here to here. Here's your suction intake. Uh, and uh, this thing is a beast. I'm glad I didn't have to yank that thing up out of the well. It's uh, it's gonna wind up going to the junkyard whenever I make the trip again. I don't know how much thing, you know, how much power that thing draws. The label on it doesn't say. I'm sure it sucks quite a bit of juice and it's frigging heavy anyway 
You know, then here's the one I just took out, this Flotec. That's 220 volts, draws eight amps, and takes a ton of juice to get it started. So that's your standard one you're gonna find in a hardware store or somebody's gonna sink down your well when it gets drilled. Then we have this, I guess it's Grundfos is how you pronounce it, which is 220 volts, draws five amps. Smaller diameter, a little bit taller. I mean, you just sit here and do friggin' reps with this thing. No problem. It's tiny. This one here has got a little more weight to it. You wouldn't want to be doing too many reps with that. Yeah, I'm going to put it back down. Okay. So... Look at the uh, evolution of technology just over, say, the last 45 years or so in, in these three water pumps. All right, so next thing I wanted to do is, you know, you can't just attach your pipe to this. That's threaded. You need to have a barb fitting like that. So I unscrewed this one out of my pump that I just took out. I cut the pipe off right there so I didn't have to try and recycle this. That's a pain. We'll start new up here. Clean the threads all up. Gotta do it again. Got them a little bit dirty. And then I went and went like this. Went, ah, crap. And I realized, oh, whoops. That's reducer bushing. Now that will screw right in there. So I can recycle that brass uh, bushing that goes from the threads down to the barb fitting. So that saves me some money. And I'd rather have brass down in the well than plastic like on that old pump there. So this is not going to be used. Um, if you had a smaller one. You could thread into here to do the same thing. That's what this is for. So don't throw this away. You never know. You might want this down the road. Hang on to it. All right, so let's get this done. Wipe these threads up again. Uh, get this peeled off. Screw it together. And we'll go put her on the line. All right, I uh, stretched my pipe out across the driveway because I figured there was no time like the present to see how deep it was. And I measured 96 feet, give or take a little. I don't care about down to the inch or two, just roughly. Um, then I looped it back around and got it back over to here. So the new pump is ready to go on. Put some pipe dope on that fitting, threaded it down on in. You can hold the pump with a real big knuckle buster or pipe wrenches and then same thing here, thread it down on in. So that's gonna meet on there like that. Now before we go putting this all together, make sure we have enough wire. Told you, this ain't my first rodeo. So if I put that all together and then went to hook this up right now, I don't have enough wire. Then I have to cut this all apart, do this all again, shorten it up. So we're gonna do it right now. So we're gonna make sure we have plenty of wire. So if I cut her off, right about in here somewhere, that gives me We'll take about 
two inches of extra wire up there. I'm gonna be taped to the pipe, so make sure we have enough. Always better have a little extra than not enough, right? <clears throat> okay. So I know we got enough now. Now I'm gonna cut it off right here. Using my Pexon pipe cutter. Okay, propane torch. A little bit of heat. Heated up the plastic pipe a little bit, slid down over the barb. Put my hose clamps on, snugged them. Waved a little more heat over it, keep it soft. Then tighten my clamps down. Let that cool down. That'll make that a good tight connection. So now, we can do the electrical. This is pretty easy too. When you get your pump, get the correct splicing kit for the electrical. It should look something like this. Inside you're gonna have heat shrink and some crimp connectors. This is a special heat shrink. It has goo, so when you shrink it up, it goos out and seals everything up in good shape. It's not just the regular old stuff you buy in the hardware store. All right, let's open her up and put her together. So the first thing you do before you do anything else, when you open the package, get your heat shrink out, put them on your wires, slide them down, get them out of the way. Your pump's going to be three wire. They're going to give you four crimps, four heat shrinks. In case you frig one up, you've got a spare. But doing this, you shouldn't frig it up. Because it really sucked to crimp it all together and go, well, crap, I've got to put my heat shrink on. Then you got to cut it apart. Now you've got one more shot to get it right. Now we've got to strip off these wires. We can crimp them together. I'll show you how... That color coating goes, and then we'll do the heat shrink. Hey, here's the crimp connectors. Just use regular wire strippers, crimpers to do it. Use these jaws, the 10, 12, to do it. Get them crimped on in good shape. So you've got on a well wire, you got different colors yellow red green and black on mine the black is not used I'm using these three so your green should be ground then your other two are your hots and since we're running 220 they're both hot we don't have a neutral so your green is gonna go to green if you ground and then your red and your yellow are going to go to your two blacks on your pump. It doesn't matter which way because we're 220. On the 115 volt, 120 volt, whatever you want to call it, soft starts, it would because you have a polarity you need to worry about. Okay. We'll crimp together. The pump wire is 14 gauge, so I use the 1614 jaws. <coughs> Wiggle everything, make sure everything is good and snug and tight. We don't want loose connections. Now we're gonna do one heat shrink tube at a time. Freaking fly. Don't bring up all three of them because if the heat starts getting on another one over here, if they're close together and heat gets over here and starts shrinking one and it sticks to it, guess what? It's where it's at and you're starting over. So there we are. Wire's about straight. We're about centered in the heat shrink. So now we're gonna seal her up. And then you don't wanna scorch the thing. Gentle heat starting a little, waving around. You don't wanna catch it on fire. doesn't take a lot of heat to do this. 
give it a break for a second. Coming out the left end. Freaking flies pissing me off. To burn the face of the torch. Some goo starting to come out the right end. There we go. The ground is sealed. So don't disturb it, let it sit there and cool down. After that one is cooled down, we're going to slide up another one. Make sure this one stays away from the heat. We'll slide up this one probably, do that one, do the third one, same fashion. So a story about these heat shrinks. Several years ago, my dad and me, in the wintertime, in the snow, changed my aunt's well pump. And basically she lost her water and... I did some troubleshooting in the house and decided, yep, the pump's shot. So uh, we pulled the pump. That was down, I think, 70, 80 feet, something like that. Not too bad. Well, when we got to this point, the heat shrink on hers, these ends were, were open wide up. It's like the heat shrink was put on, they just hit the middle of it real quick. And they never heat shrinked all the way out to the ends. So the water just went down in and seeped right into the wires. Everything was all green, corroded. Um, how the electricity just wasn't going to ground and shorting everything out, I don't know. So it's pretty important that this is sealed up and done right. Yeah, if you can see it. Right there, tip of my finger. You can see the goo that's come out. And you start seeing that goo coming out on either end. You're done. You don't need to try and shrink it more than that. We got good, tight, snug connections on everything. Now we can tape the wire to the pipe. And this thing's ready to go back down the hole. So the rope on the pump, once we get down the casing just a little bit, it's fine. It's good and solid. So I just, uh, Tied square knot, <clears throat> then uh, a couple of half hitches on either side, I taped it up so we don't have any pieces flopping around, added a chunk of rope to it, faked it out over here on the lawn so we don't have it tangle up, it's tied to the pump, wires are secure to pipe clamps are secure everything is ready to go you can go back down the hole then i will replace the o-ring in the pitless before setting that back down in there let's do it i guess going down the hole pretty nice I'm at my upper torque arrestor now. Just gonna let it hang there for a minute. Using an old towel. <clears throat> wiping the wire, wiping the rust off the pipe as it goes. Coming off pretty nice. It's been sitting out here in the sun drying, so it's not muck now. So I'm cleaning off the pipe as it goes down in the hole might as well right I think that o-ring is okay I wiped it up get everything nice and clean around it it looks nice it feels nice it's sticking out above this brass surface and uh, when I broke it free taking it out I heard a so that was a good sound to hear. So I'm gonna run with it. I do have a spare if I do need to change it, but I'll hang on to the spare for another day. 
So now comes the fun part. Getting that thing back down in there and getting uh, this side and the other side lined up and seated down in. All right. Feels like I got it seated into the pitless. Took me about eight or nine shots. But uh, it's not going, the rod ain't going down. The pipe, it wiggles back and forth. Um, feels like it's seated. So I've hooked the wires back up. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's a ground wire and it has a yellow wire nut. Oh no, the world's gonna end. I don't give a shit. At the end of the day, the little electrons running around in there, they don't care what color of wire nut is. All right, let's turn the juice on. See if we get water squirting out at the pitless or not. Hey, hey, it works. Turn the juice on. Started getting water up into the water tank. Came out and I could hear a thing down there going, mm. didn't hear any water, didn't see any water squirting out of the pitless, so it sealed up good. So, sweet. Now I just gotta tie up my uh, oh crap rope around the case in here. I got some bleach. You know, I've had this thing out on the ground and have my hands all over it, so I'm gonna dump some of that down the well. I'm gonna turn on the. Uh, outside spigot here let the water run for a while let it purge itself out now instead of drawing all that power to start the pump and drawing eight amps of running amps I'm just drawing five amps flat I like it okay all back together I've got water doing laundry haven't run out of water yet, so I guess it works.